So I remember when I was first starting to get into testing, I didn't really understand why we would mock anything. And the most common thing you're going to probably mock is API calls. The reason for it is it wouldn't make a lot of sense that every time your test run, which is hundreds, if not thousands of times a day, every time you save your code and your test run, that it goes and pings an API, right? That gets very expensive very quickly. And really what we care is that we get some data back from it. That's where mocks really exceed. So let's pretend that we have this user service here that is going to go and fetch some data. This is a real API path. And it's going to take an ID. It's going to go get the user by that. And in our user class, we have a user service. We're just storing a reference to it. But then there's this asynchronous method we added called get user by ID. And we're going to pass the ID there. So a little bit of setup here, just something to keep in mind, but I did want to give you a very practical example. Now, a mock's intention is to essentially go in the same flow, but maybe skip over the implementation logic. And if you've ever worked with the solid principles, this is a great example of how you might use the dependency inversion principle. So let's create our own mock for how we might actually just test that we got the ID, right? And that we're getting some sort of data back. Although we're not going to worry too much about the data. In our case, we're going to worry that the ID is correct. And you might be saying, well, why don't we just use a spy? Spies work, and it would work in this instance, but as you go and you work with more and more complex pieces of the application, you'd be creating spy after spy after spy. And really, a mock here is going to mock out what we need. And so I wanted to build one from scratch here. So let's go and we'll create the mock user service. And typically this would be in its own file, but here we're just going to create it locally and start thinking about how we might actually test our, our object, right? So what do we need? Well, we need something to store a reference to, to the last ID. So maybe we'll have a last ID property. We'll initialize it to a uh, null, something empty. We also are probably going to want to return some user data. In this case, we'll um, we'll do this, and we can we'll just leave it as an empty object. If we want to update it later, we can. And then we have this. What are we mocking? Well, we're mocking the get by user ID method. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we make that part of excuse me part of our mock here. E that's going to be passed in. And that was an asynchronous method. So might as well make it async. And then we will simply say this dot last ID is going to be equal to ID. That way we're going to know that we hit it. And then we want to return the user data so we can continue to go and do whatever it is that we want to do with it. This is our mock. Pretty straightforward at this point. Now, so this empty object, we're going to go ahead and Make sure we follow the same name here. Pass in our mock user service. All right. So definitely a little bit more complex than some of the other testing aspects that we've done. But we're still going to follow the same arrange, act, and assert. Now, this is returning a promise because of the async keyword. And if you go back to our actual user.js class, this is an async function as well. So we're going to need to await it. How might we do that? Well, these are arrow functions, right? So we can simply put the async keyword on here and then await whatever the result is. So before we do that, uh, it looks like our model data is already all set up here. There's not really too much arranged data other than perhaps we want to be explicit, right? So even though our last ID is null by default, let's go ahead and reset to null. And then also, maybe we want to actually set the user equal to a new user here that we're expecting. Maybe secretly, my first name is actually Dolan. My middle name is actually Coding God. And my last name is Nunya business and then an id is actually two right so maybe we're just doing some crazy anonymous stuff let's go ahead and make that a little bit more readable 
so it doesn't wrap there. Maybe that's actually what our user data is. Now, let's go ahead and act. So we're gonna get our result and we're gonna set this equal. We're gonna await what our model dot, what is it called again? I forgot already. The get my full user data call is. And we can go ahead and expect that the mock user service dot last ID to be what is our ID when we did it? It was one, right? So we expect it to be one. Let's go ahead and save it. What do we expect null to be one? So let's see where we may have gone wrong. So we did our user, we set that, set it to null. We then updated the, updated the service. Now, a good testing. Let's go ahead and debug, actually. This will be a nice, cool little debug challenge. So if we go over to user.js, everything goes as you would expect. We can say this ID. So what is our expectation here? Our ID here is that we're getting one. So get by user ID. So let's jump back into here. So it looks like the data is doing that correctly. But are we getting it here? Pass in our ID. And it looks like we're not getting it there. Oh, we are. Hmm. Interesting. So we set the last ID to null. Returning the user. We're waiting. Mock user service dot last ID. This shouldn't be it, but why isn't that updating? We await it. We get my full user data. Do we need to oh, await it here? I don't think so. Interesting. Debugging. It's fun, isn't it? So we await, we have our data, we have our mock user service. We have our model. Pass in our model. User services. Hmm. I don't know why that would be. It looks like it's getting all the correct data. Let's take this off. There we go. We had a little bit of an error there. So when you're defining your objects, you want to make sure that the key here, the um, or rather the assignment is within the proper scope of this. So although the value is coming through, this last ID here, was getting overwritten. So as you're going, or not getting overwritten, it wasn't in the proper context. So a little bit of a stumble there, and that happens. Don't expect as you're writing your test, for everything to just go perfectly. Sometimes you're going to have mistakes when you build your mocks. It's also why it's important to have this sort of its own file that you can use again and again so you're not recreating the wheel every single time. Everybody makes mistakes, myself included. I like to leave my mistakes in there so you can kind of see a debugging process as we look through here and see a real world scenario of how to maybe come to a solution instead of just seeing the happy path, right? We're always talking about the happy path and the unhappy path. So there was a little bit of an unhappy path, but now we are able to see our last ID. And if we wanted to, we could check the result as well here. I'm not gonna do that. The screencast is one of the longer ones already. Let's go ahead and move on to the challenge.